God dag, mina damer och herrar. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Today we're going to talk about August Strindberg. This man is... Wow. <laughs> It's impossible to do just one video on this man, but he is one of Sweden's biggest poets and novelists. He created the first novel of Sweden called The Red Room. Eller på svenska Röda rummet. But he was so much more than that. He was so much more than that. He did research on everything from occultism to politics, nationalism. He was part of a sort of a, I would define this a pre-socialist discussion groups, things like that. He was before his time in every way. But he also helped frame the future. In our future investigations of absurd people and poets and whomever, you're going to notice that Strindberg is gonna show up again and again and again. Because so many people copy this guy. It, like, the, the insane part about this is, during my research I've been trying to look up uh, Swedish media talking about it, and they don't grasp it. They don't grasp the influence that this guy had outside of Sweden. And I mean, the reason for that is how Sweden works. It's, there is no world outside of Sweden. Sweden is everything. That's why we have all the problems we have. The way Strindberg formed his novels was through himself, through his own observation, through his own character. For example, you saw the man in the video before, the man not drinking, but the man judging, quietly well drunk himself. That man is Strindberg. That's his alter ego that he has created. So the way he formulates these stories is again through himself, and the way to do that is to get the maximum effect. Plus, that's the only thing he understands. Strindberg, in every way, is a naturalist. He views the world through his own observation and, and, and will judge the world based on his own observations. So to do the story with someone who is not him wouldn't make any sense. How can you explain something you have never observed? So it's better to do it through your own being. Plus, I mean, he likes himself, so come on, come on, get a, it's fun, it's fun. I just want to quickly talk about the controversies of, of Strindberg. He's usually defined as a sexist and anti-Semite. And sadly, the thing is, uh, name me a naturalist who isn't. <laughs> Jokes aside, most of this has to do with his antisocial behavior and probably his autism. He had a lot of women throughout his life and they, they, they all kind of have failed. And instead of you know, trying to understand what happened, he explains to the woman because he's sort of, you know, his autism kind of doesn't make him see social cues as well. He loves women, it's not the point, but he's just a bit autistic. Nine. When it comes to his own religion, he was mostly part of occultism and sort of like a weird Christian idea. But most of his inspirations came from Imam of Sweden boy and Madame Bavatsky, Miss Theosophy herself. A lot of his reasons for reading Sweden boy and Bavatsky is because of his very religious upbringing. It's something he, you know, you have to answer these questions, especially if you've been pushed at it as a kid. You cannot just ignore childhood religious indoctrination in that sense. But he did take the weirdest of takes when it comes to religion, but eh, you yeah. know. Anyone who reads Sweden Boy does turn into a cuckoo crazy man sooner or later, so that's pretty much what happened. I just want to go back to say that all the poets and writers that I have uh, covered so far, all has been inspired by Strindberg. But let's take the form he puts in the Red Room. I don't want to talk about the book itself. It's, it, it's not that interesting. But what is interesting is sort of the pre-socialistic talking groups. So... He, the, the Red Room is about, it's not about the murder, Red Room, Red Room, no, no, no. It's about a discussion group, more or less, meeting in a Red Room. Meeting, actually, I think it's a pub. There's meeting in a pub, which is painted like red. But the point for these groups are, here you can discuss, talk about anything that's outside of the institutions of Sweden itself. It's a group outside of the institutions, and they have the freedom to talk about whatever they want. Det är väl ingenting att skratta åt, det vill säga hur många stackare som är lidande på det. Vadå för dina stackare, stackars kapitalister? Nej, du går sig inga fördomar här inte. The reason why these groups are so important and influential, and in a way it takes a form today as well, 
is because how how part of the state and institutions everything usually were. Let's take universities today. They haven't changed. Sure, they are they are less uh, harsh now, but they haven't changed in the rituals. The rituals are still the same. And you're not really supposed to talk about anything that is not part of the curriculum or part of books that has already been covered. There is no free thought in university. It is only what can you refer to, which is very boring. And especially if you have a let's say a seminar group within a certain topic in university, it's not big brain discussions. It's not actually that interesting. It talks about things that you should be talking about, not things that actually will develop humanity forward. Which is very sad, but it's, it's an issue with the institutions. But this is why you have the side groups. You know, a big part of university is not the university itself, but it's the drinking, it's the pubbing afterwards, because there the changes are actually happening. It's the discussion, mixed with alcohol, I'm guessing, that, that is not part of any curriculum that can change the world. And Streamby nailed it. He nailed it. That's why it's been so inspirational. This form of the communication group is growing today in the form of the internet. It's the same thing. It's something outside of institutions which you're mostly free to just discuss. And from this group, it will actually change the world much more than the institutions in place. Much of academia can be influential, especially like uh, bigger projects that can take 10 years to make. They are influential in the world, don't take me wrong. But the smaller changes, sort of like the outside perspectives, all comes from these groups. So the internet and groups there today will see things outside of the system and will change things. And then after that, the universities will just uh, see, oh, look at that, that's something. We're going to now take that and pretend it's ours. Ah, I hate it so much. But no, so do keep up conversations, do come up, keep up learning more things and try to view things from an outside perspective. It will change the world and hopefully for the better, but obviously no one knows. Um. So before I end this video, I just want to say the reason for this video. With all the people that have been inspired by him, he will appear over and over again. So I have to cover him. And second is Gothism, or Gothicism. He was a proponent for that, weirdly enough. He was for the idea that uh, Hebrew being the origin of language. And by Hebrew being the origin of language, the Swedish crown had a rightful place to be the monarchy of Sweden. And that Finland belongs to Sweden. The argument was between Wittgenstein